Manhattan Neighborhood Network, in partnership with the League of Women Voters of New York, Gotham Gazette, and the Amsterdam News, is pleased to welcome you to a debate among the candidates running for City Council District 4. The winner in New York City's general election on Tuesday, November 7, will take office in January. I'm Ben Max, Executive Editor of Gotham Gazette. City Council District 4 includes a variety of neighborhoods on the east side of Manhattan and extends west into Times Square. The candidates joining us today are Keith Powers, the Democratic Party candidate, Rachel Honig, the Liberal Party candidate, and Rebecca Harari, the candidate of the Republican, Women's Equality, Reform, and Stop de Blasio parties. Thank you all for being here. Uh, the first question goes to you, Ms. Harari. It is, what makes you the best candidate to represent the city council district? Thank you, Ben. I appreciate that. I'll tell you, you know, I am not happy with what's going on in New York City government. I am not happy with what Mayor de Blasio is doing to our city. We have, for the last four years, seen an increase in homelessness by 40 percent. We are seeing all of our mom and pop stores uh, really at risk, and many of them are closing. And our education system, what I feel, is really in the tank. Affordable housing is another issue that's come to a crisis level. I come to this uh, election with a lifetime of experience. I have founded four different nonprofit organizations as well as run my own business for over 10 years. My, my master's degree from Columbia University is in business and nonprofit management and I know that I am the right person for the job because I come to the job with integrity and with what it takes to get the job done. Unlike my one of my opponents who is a registered lobbyist, I come with what it takes to clean up crime, to give us more security, to uh, uh, do better for our education system, and also to make sure that our mom and pop businesses stay open. Thank you, and Mr. Powers will give you a chance to respond in sure. a minute, but uh, Ms. Honig, that. why don't you start us off with what makes you the best candidate for this seat? Absolutely, and thanks, Ben, uh, and thank you for having us. I think Rebecca outlined very clearly a lot of the problems in this city, but when we look at the candidates here before you, voters in District 4 have a choice. I am the candidate that has both public sector and private sector experience, having owned my own business in public relations and marketing and run other district, other businesses in this district, and also having served the state in the 90s as the director of special projects for the State Council on the Arts, advocating for arts and culture and arts and education in our schools. So I, I really can represent this district from both sides of that issue. Um, certainly there are lots of issues to tackle, whether it's affordable housing, whether it's the homeless crisis, whether it's safe streets and bicycle traffic and a number of things, but ultimately as the liberal party candidate in this race, um, I am the independent candidate. I am not beholden to the Democratic Party, the Republican Party, special interests. I am the true independent in this race who's coming to represent the voices of this district as a citizen independent candidate. Thank you. And Mr. Powers. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having us today. It's good to be back here. Um, my name is Keith Powers. I'm also running for the 4th Council District. I'm the Democratic nominee uh, represent for the 4th Council District to replace Dan Garonick, who I think for 12 years has done an excellent job representing this community. And I'd like to continue some of his work on affordable housing, on saving small businesses, on protecting the quality of life in New York City. Um, I, I come at this as somebody who was born and raised in this district. I was raised in Stuyvesant Town. I'm the son of a, uh, of a nurse and a small business owner. Grew up in a rent-stabilized apartment. And I've been spending my time in taking my roots in this community and fighting on its behalf as a tenant advocate in Stuyvesant Town, Peter Cooper, as a member of the community board, working for elected officials like State Senator Liz Kruger and Assembly Member Jonathan Bing. I bring real experience in government to this race. I also, uh, I also have, think I have some really good new ideas for, for this city, which I've talked about in my, in my previous campaign for the primary and I'll continue to talk about, including a 22-point plan I put out that was endorsed by the New York Times and many other groups that will help make sure that government works on behalf of the public here. Um, contrary to the, the, to the prior statement, yes, I used to work at a firm. I don't anymore. That's, I think that's a past employment. That's, that's uh, a weird allegation. But, um, but either way, I think I bring real experience to this race. I bring real roots, and I bring new ideas. And I'm happily endorsed by Congress Member Karen Maloney, State Senator Liz Kruger, uh, City Council Member Dan Garonic, many others. And I'm proud to have those endorsements based on working in this community for a very Just long time. Continue a little more specifically yeah. with your response to Ms. Harari. Sure. You did work at a lobbying firm. Yeah. Can you explain that yeah, work? I worked, for the, I worked for the former Council Speaker, Peter Vallone. I worked on behalf of some, some excellent nonprofits, um, some that Ms. Harari ha, ha, uh, that has created, I'm sure, also. Uh, 
uh, have a need for government relations, but um, to, uh, but that was a past employment, and it, it continues in a trend of also having worked for Assemblymember Jonathan being his chief of staff and working for State Senator Liz Kruger. So you just touched on this a little bit, and we're going to start with Ms. Honig this time. In your opening statements, you, you touched a little bit on some of the problems facing the district, but can you name what you would call maybe the top two, maybe three problems facing City Council District 4 and sort of describe those problems and what they mean to residents of the district that you're hoping to represent? Ms. Honig. Thanks a lot, Ben. And, and obviously, there's more than two or three that are really facing the residents of this district. But the two that really drove me to run, and then I'll add the one that I really heard most on the campaign trail, was the overdevelopment and um, building of mega towers in our communities. This city hall has overlooked contextual zoning. We're building mega towers that no one lives in. They're creating, you know, warehouses in the sky, and they're, we're losing the con contextuality of our neighborhoods. The second is the loss of the small businesses in our neighborhood. We have over 200 empty storefronts in District 4 alone. And then what that essentially does is not only the loss to the city of the revenue of those businesses, but it essentially crumbles our neighborhoods. We have homeless that live in the street. We have people who no longer want to walk the street. Our small businesses are our neighbors outside the door, and it's essential that we protect them and bring them back. And the third issue, because that's the kind of council person I want to be, is to be responsive to the issues that I hear, is street traffic, whether that's bicycle or pedestrian or car, is following the rules of the road. And we literally have residents they're afraid to leave their house because of the congestion, whether it's bicycles going the wrong way or others. So we need to have everybody following the rules of the road. Thank you. Mr. Powers, the biggest issues facing the district? Affordable housing and the cost of living. It's one of the reasons I decided to run, because a neighborhood like mine Peter, in Peter Cooper and Stives in town has been a neighborhood in transition for many years, where long-term tenants who's, who made it a great neighborhood and decided to build their lives there are facing an uncertain future. And many of the new generations who want to call this place their home also feel like it is too expensive and there is a uncertain future ahead for many of the people that would love to build a family there as well. And it's not just Dives and Pepe, Peter Cooper, Waterside Plaza, Midtown, all the way to Upper East Side. Many people feel like the cost of living and the affordability in New York City is going out of control. And I've been a tenant leader in Stuyves Town, Peter Cooper for years. I've been on the front of the fights to, uh, to make sure that we keep it affordable, which have been big fights that have been spread to the other parts of the city. So I know this very firsthand. And so that's one big issue I think we need to tackle and one of the reasons I decided to run. The second one is clearly one that everybody is looking at right now, which is homelessness. And it's, it's, a, it's a problem that I think we have been slow to, to respond to as a city and one that we're going to need bold, bold and innovative solutions for the next four years and an issue that I think the mayor and the city council are going to spend a lot of time on. That's not just saying that there's a problem, it's actually saying how are we going to fix it with affordable housing, looking for new places for shelters, programs and social services to bring people out of homelessness. It's a big solution with a lot of moving parts to it. And if I'm elected to city council, I'm going to spend a lot of time on. Thank you. Ms. Ferreri, the biggest issues facing the district. Thank you. I just want to mention that, you know, I find it weird that my opponent called it weird that I spoke about his lobbying. He has a track record of having now he has a lot of donors, some of his most notorious donors, and he's speaking about tenants issues. He ha they have a, he, his, some of his donors have a track record of harassing tenants and pushing them out of their rent-stabilized apartments. That's worrisome to me. And I think that, you know, this needs to be exposed. And I really do hope that the New York Times, who endorsed Keith, is watching because they need to understand what it is that Keith has really done. And they need to look at who his contributors are, who his donors are, and who his clients were. His clients have a, a tremendous uh, chip in this game. And they stand to really cash in if Keith Powers becomes our next city councilman. The client you're referring to that you um, want Mr. They Powers are to all, address? It's very easy to look at his record. It's all public record. You can see who his donors are. You will see all the real estate uh, companies and developers that have given thousands and thousands of dollars to his campaign. They, are all, they all stand to gain by having Keith in office. Now, I would oh, like I, to I, talk. I have to, I'll come back to you <coughs> about issues, but Mr. Powers. We, you asked for two or three issues that the, that's the District 4 was, is looking for. I named two. We had three others. I didn't hear a single one. I don't hear a single issue that... I'm happy to talk, talk about them, but I'd I think like to it's talk, also let, important let, let, that we let's talk hear about the issues. Let's talk about... I've spent my entire, my entire adult life working on... My entire life in this district working on behalf of it. I work for good, I've good, worked for great elected officials who've supported me, like Liz Krueger, like Jonathan Bing, like Karen Maloney. Um, I have a great track record here. Let's talk about issues. Let's talk about experience. What have you done in this district to make a better place? What experience will you bring to City Hall? What experience will you bring to the district? What fights have you been on the front lines of? When you talk about affordable housing and Stuyvesant Town being 
being sold, helping small businesses that are affected by the Second Avenue subway, creating a thousand new school seats, improving the quality of life in New York City, talking about overdevelopment. I, I've been so, working so, on those so issues. Let me, let me ask so, you this. Yeah. You, you've put forward, as you've talked about yeah. before, yeah. Uh, a government reform yeah, plan. Absolutely. But a lot of people talk about campaign donations and their influence on elected sure. officials. So how do you draw those lines in terms of... I think, I, first of all, everything's disclosed. Everybody has a clear record. I've talked about putting all meetings online. I would encourage everybody who's standing on this stage and all council kids to have to talk about full disclosure. Who are you meeting with, when, where, and why? Um, this should, debate should not be about this one issue that is trying to be defined. Let's talk about the District 4. Let's talk about the issues that matter. District 4 constituents, what they care about. Let's make this a campaign about ideas, which was what the primary was about, and that's why I think we had a healthy debate. Uh, so we're going to come back to Ms. Ferrer in a second. Just lastly on that, sure. are there other things than putting meetings online that you can do to ensure that donors to your campaign, and this is really a question so that sure everybody, everybody should and yeah. could answer because you're all running for office, you're all taking donations. Uh, how do you ensure that people who've donated to your campaign don't come and say to you, I mean, we've seen this with the mayor as a, as a big discussion of yeah. the last three and a half years now. How do you ensure that they don't come to you and say, you know, we don't, maybe they don't say it explicitly, but we donated to your campaign and right. here's the favors we're looking for. Yeah, every candidate has to answer that question, by the way. Uh, every candidate who's ever run sure. for office has to answer that question. Look, I've spent my entire life working on the behalf of, this con of, of the community. I think it's clear that my interests, where my interests lie. So before we get back to issues facing the committee, yeah, I'm in the, the, I'm the, in the middle. Go ahead. Like, at, risk of taking your, at risk of taking your moderation over, um, I think there there's some there's some holes on both parts here, right? And I'd love to hear Rebecca's idea for the community as well, and I'm sure she's anxious to provide them. Um, but Keith has not spent his entire life working for the community. Oh, yeah. For the past number of years, he's worked in a, in a lobbying firm. In addition, his good government reform actually looked at ways that he felt he needed to pledge not to be in touch with his firm as such he also clearly sees some conflict there himself if he feels like he needs to to address that we're going to spend a few more seconds on this then we want to get to issues facing the district okay, so one, go ahead. Of, one of the things that keith put in his 22 point plan for which many of them have already been passed by city council it's kind of repetitive but he said that um, he wants uh, if you're coming out of office you can't work as a lobbyist for two years it's sort of a cooling off period but what about beforehand you shouldn't be able to work as a lobbyist for two years you need a cooling off period before you come into office it's not just about afterward he's coming into office and bringing clients with him that are stand to gain and when you want to talk about being the chief of staff for Jonathan Bing one of the things you did was lead a fight f uh, against teachers and to re repeal and pull away the restrictions for firing them needlessly that is just I'm sorry it's out and out wrong and he can talk about Jonathan Bing all he wants but talk about his record with Jonathan Bing and you will find something you're not looking for and I worry for our voters that so they are not get getting Mr. the Powers full the picture to respond, yeah. respond to that I, I, and then I I haven't heard any ideas oh, that will improve the lives of constituents in the fourth council district. I, didn't get I can this talk far about many ideas. more. Right. I, I, I'm still waiting to hear actual ideas. I think that that proves some some people have been spending their time in this district. Some others moved in here to run for office, and and I, I would like to be, could continue to talk about ways that we can prevent. I, by the way, I should just mention. I don't think any of these ideas, the 22-point plan, or, or mo mostly any of them have been passed yet. There are actually a lot of new I ideas. Two or three, you know, I, I don't sure. want to jump in and try to fact check every statement. Okay. A few, maybe, but not the majority of the 22. I'll give you just 30 seconds now, because you use a lot of your time sure. going on Mr. Powers, which sure. is your choice. Um, what are two issues really facing the district? Number that you, one you problem talk a is about? homelessness. And I can tell you from experience, I opened up a nonprofit organization named Propel Network for women who need to work but don't have marketable job skills and are pretty much on welfare. What we do is we pay to put those women into uh, vocational training. And with a return on investment of six to one, women come out with vocational skills and we can help them find jobs immediately. I want to put the same idea to work for our able-bodied homeless. It is a demonstrated and well thought out plan that works. And that's something that I plan to implement right away. Okay, so uh, the next round here is actually going to be returning to the issues you identified and you already provided one solution that you'd like to move forward on. But returning to the issues that you identified, can you give a specific idea for addressing those issues, solutions, mm -hmm. ideas you want to bring into the city council day one, whether it's something you would just do in the district with your powers in the district, 
or bring to the city council for legislation or funding. We're going to start with you, Mr. Powers, returning to your issues, yeah. affordable housing and homelessness. Mm -hmm. What do you want to put forward and sure. do about it? So affordable housing is something I spend a lot of time on and making sure that both uh, tenant organizations, community groups that are working on these issues are, uh, are well resourced, meaning that we have legal resources for people who are fighting against affordable housing, that tenants organizations like my tenant organization, Stuyvesant Peter Cooper, is equipped for these fights. Just the basic things, those are important. Uh, we have to go to Albany, obviously to do a lot of the rent regulation protections in the city so we have to make sure that we are we are going up there and and advocating for good laws and changing the politics in Albany but here in New York City the rent guidelines board making sure that we are fighting every single year I go down there every single year and advocate for no, little to no increases for tenants because I feel we've been overburdened for years uh, two is making sure that we are expanding programs like the senior citizen, citizen rent increase exemption and expanding it to places like Waterside Plaza where it currently doesn't exist um, and then making sure that we're passing bills in in the city council, like the low, like low uh, council for low income tenants, expanding protections around predatory equity. Those are big ones. I, in homelessness, I said it's a big solution. We have to actually create jobs for people that are, are employable. We have to um, actually look for siting of shelters. I should say I took an unpopular position in my district to support a homeless shelter directly across the street from my house. That's going to be tough fights in the city moving forward. But we're going to need leaders who actually want to address these issues and take unpopular. Positions. Positions. Mr. Rayer, you talked about homelessness. I don't know if you want to mention a, a second issue or talk a little bit more about how you would look to address homelessness. Okay, well, the first thing I, I just want to say is he's talking about standing up for, for tenants in Stytown, but he's going to have to answer to the um, landlords and developers that put a lot of money in his, in his contribution coffers for his campaign. This, but when, one of the other issues that I like to talk about is stores closing. We have a lot of stores closing, and I do have real ideas, one of them being that I want to create an incentive for landlords to keep stores open either when they're the, the lease is expiring for a current tenant or to get someone in. If they can get somebody in or keep somebody in within a year of a store closing, I'd like to offer a tax uh, break for the first year that that store is is now in there. However, the reverse side would be that if the, he decides that he would if landlords would rather warehouse space and wait until they get three or four stores in a row open so that they can rent it to another uh, pharmacy or bank, instead, I think that they need to be taxed between, between the difference of what they received the last time in rent when somebody was in there and what they are now asking for. Rent has been tripled doubled and tripled for a lot of tenants and that's why they're leaving and I, I look to Keith and ask him what are you going to do about it when you have your landlords uh, and all of your developers knocking on your door and saying we gave you a lot of money don't bother us we're going to come back to Mr. Power soon but uh, to give you a chance here Ms. Honig Absolutely. the issues that you identified you also talked about small <clears throat> business what ideas do you have there? You talked about overdevelopment. What ideas uh, would you put forth on sure. that? Sure, and I also talked about bike traffic bike and, traffic, uh, and yeah. congestion. Um, just to, we'll start with the small the small business issue because I have a lot of new ideas there. The tax the tax abatement doesn't necessarily work because there's complex state and federal regulations that we don't necessarily have control over. The first thing that we need to do is make sure that we repeal or change the floor rather of the commercial rent tax, which is a bill that's on the the floor of the city council now, which will affect and essentially bring relief to about 3,000 businesses in the district. Um, Rebecca's given previous plans to abolish it altogether. One plan costs us $55 million, the other costs us $770 million. I sit squarely in the middle as a moderate saying let's, let's keep the floor. Um, the other thing is the sheer amount of permits that a small business needs to go through. It's really hard to be a small business in this district. If you want to open a corner bodega, let's, let's say, you need 70 permits from 30 different places. So while I'm not all for creating more bureaucracy in our city, we need a department that is really geared around easing the burden for small businesses and making that path for them that much lighter, in addition to creative and innovative marketing services, which is my background Last for our small businesses. 10 seconds, you want to address the, the bike Absolutely, and the bike traffic, absolutely. And, and so whether it is licensing of bicycles in the same way I need to license my dog or my car for that enforcement, but it really is an enforcement issue. And the mayor was at a town hall recently where he claimed that there is an enforcement, except on my way to that town hall, a bicycle went the wrong way down First Avenue and in front of a traffic cop. I looked at her and I said, Are you hey, talking about regular bikes or the motorized, uh, motorized Well, motorized bikes, bikes are actually illegal in this city, and so we need to actually put the burden on the that was businesses a major issue in the that. the district with deliveries. And Absolutely. And the, and the burden, um, 
and this might be one of the very few things I agree with this mayor on, is that the burden really should be on the businesses that are encouraging the bike messengers to utilize that. But that's a separate issue, and it's actually illegal and more easily enforced because they are licensed. Um, the, the real issue is, in, is empowering our traffic agents to stop and enforce bike traffic. So on the way to this town hall, a bike went the wrong way down First Avenue in front of a traffic cop. Between me and the traffic cop, I said to her, excuse me, what, what, what do you do here? And she said, oh, I don't know. This isn't my beat. I, I don't know what's going on here. Okay, well, so I think we all know First Avenue goes north. Okay. So, Can I rebut on something that sure. you said? Sure, quickly, on the um, commercial rent tax? <clears throat> yes, on the commercial rent tax. this is a tax. bill, just before you jump in, this is a bill that... Yeah. You, who you're hoping your predecessor will be, uh, Dan Gorodnik, who's leaving because of term limits, uh, has been championing. There's well over 40 sponsors in the city council. It hasn't quite moved. The mayor has basically said we can't give up any of the revenue, um, but but right. people are either talking about reform or abolishing but it. Right. He could force so, it to the but, floor, but, and he's not. So what 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 uh, Gorodnik is proposing is that the the cap goes from um, the the base goes from 250 to 500. Um, that will only help about 30 percent of small businesses. What I'm proposing, because our mayor he keeps pushing record uh, uh, budget. Uh, budgets down the throats of city council. In fact, this year it's an $85 billion budget, which is, I think is about 20% higher than last year, is that we do it, oh, we repeal the commercial rent tax, but over three years. So for the first year, we raise it to $500,000. The second year, to $750,000, which will help about another 30 to 40% of, of our uh, small businesses. And then by the end of the third year, it would be repealed altogether. This would give the city council and the mayor ample opportunity to uh, prepare for the loss coming from commercial so rent tax. Out commercial rent right. tax. Yeah, yeah, you, if in. you want to talk about being uh, physically prudent, you would blow a hole of $800 million into the New York City budget by repealing the, this commercial rent tax. There's so much I don't think you can, spending in the commercial that's, in, in that's our, fine, in our city budget. That's fine, but in three years you're going to add $800 million to the New York City budget. You're saying you're criticizing no. the mayor and the city council for being fiscally right. Not being fiscally prudent, and you are adding eight hundred million dollars in spending when I am in three city years. Because I'm a councilwoman, I will come one. in with plenty of ideas to save us money, and including um, saving us the money from the money that we would no, no longer need from the commercial rent tax. You know, there are things in the budget now that our mayor has put in, like ten million dollars for more for six thousand new city bikes. First of all, City Bikes is a private company. Why do we need to spend $10 million on more City Bikes? It's, there's, there's, a, there's so many different things in there sure that are full yeah, of waste I'm of sure spending. I'm familiar with the City Bike uh, mm -hmm. expenditure. You're correct in saying the budget has grown quite a bit under the mayor. I think it's, 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 it's been more like 18% yes. over his term, not in yeah, one year. Okay. But, but talk about how, if you're the City Council member, you obviously have this role of being in the 51-member body, of legislating there, but you obviously also have your district role, which you're all sort of talking about here, responding to constituents, et cetera. Mm -hmm. How would you run your office? How would you take in constituent concerns? How would you go out and make sure that you're hearing your constituents? Most uh, constituents across the city that you know I'm aware of are often more concerned with having the district needs met than what legislation you're proposing at the city council, unless it has a very strong direct uh, effect on the district. So constituent yeah. services. Mm -hmm. We're actually gonna start back with Ms. Harari and move this way. Uh, wh how would you run your office? How would you make sure that you're in touch with your constituents? It's a big district, lots of high-rise buildings, et cetera. How would you approach that? Well, of course, I need to have an office on the ground, okay? So I would actually like to have more, instead of having one big office on the ground, and in addition to the city hall office, I would really like to have satellite offices in a few different main uh, neighborhoods throughout the district, uh, because every different part of the district has different needs. Um, you, you know, you and we have seniors, for example, that are concerned about um, bicycles, but seniors are, are, are throughout the district. Instead, what I'm talking about is what are the uh, issues, for example, for Waterside Plaza? Waterside Plaza has a, a, real, a real problem. They do not have a, um, a, a dedicated lane for emergency vehicles to get in and out of the area. Um, so they, they need their own satellite station, their own satellite office. I would like to put satellite office 
offices all throughout the city. Um, when I mean satellite, I mean satellite, small, that have one to two people working on them where I would be going every day to different offices and speaking one-on-one -on -one with different constituents and finding out what their issues are and solving them. That's what I have a record of doing. I have a record of solving problems. I see the problems when I opened a school for children with autism, for example, back when Keith was about, I don't know, 15. I tell you, I saw that there was a, a record amount of autistic children and no school to go to. And I got a school open within one year, and that is now a model school throughout the country for children with autism. Thank you. Ms. Honig, how would you approach constituent services? Absolutely, and I think I've already approached it. I've actually given my cell phone number to every resident of this district in advertisements, on my website, in correspondence that I've sent. By the way, viewers, it's 646-389-1133 because that's the kind of representative I want to be. I love being on the street talking to my neighbors. Um, but Rebecca's right. The district is very big. It's from 98th Street to 14th Street, and it's incumbent on this representative to make sure that they're not just talking about Stuyvesant Town and Peter Cooper Village all the time, but right. they're, they're an equal representative to Carnegie Hill, to Murray Hill, to Sutton Place, mm -hmm. to Kipps Bay, to Turtle Bay, and the variety of districts. So we need both more town halls, we need more visits to neighborhood associations. And I also, as a marketing executive, I see this job very much as a communication from my office to the district about what the city council does, who their representative is. And I think we would all tell you that our experience on the street, or I hope, because then it means people haven't been on the street, is people don't even know what district they live in. They don't know who their representative is. And how are. do you do that? And they haven't. You talk to them, and also you make it an exercise where you let them know about the services that are available to them. And I think, lastly, I would employ a lot of technology. There's a lot of, um, of polling technology that's coming for government now where people can, with the push of a button, say, these are the issues that are most important to me. And you can pull and you can gather that in a more efficient way than we've been able to in the past, and that's what I would employ. Mr. Powers? Yeah, and this is a very familiar issue to me because I've done constituent services in this district. And, you know, elected officials like State Senator Liz Kruger are applauded for their ability to work and help with their constituents. So um, one of the things I promised to do in this campaign is you actually can't afford satellite offices with the city council budget. You can actually make sure you're doing, you know, rotating hours throughout this district and community centers uh, in every single neighborhood throughout the month, which we used to do when I worked for Assemblymember Bing. Other elected officials do it as well where you bring the district office to the, to, to the community, similar to the way the mayor does the sort of town hall in the, uh, the, or the city hall in your borough, you can bring the district office to people so they feel like they're being represented as well, uh, re re you know, relative to where the physical location of the office is. Um, I've worked firsthand on all these issues. I know that, um, I know that you're, it's a correct assertion that people want to know what, what, they, what sort of day-to-day -day issues they can be helped with when they, when they interact with their council member. Um, I would employ other things. I would use things like technology, making sure your website and other things are portals for people to be able to submit uh, comments and concerns. Going directly to people's buildings. I think that's other council members do that. I think it's a good idea, hosting sort of mini town halls in people's buildings throughout it. And then also being more visible with town halls. Councilmember Garonic just did a town hall two weeks ago. I know we all attended. I think those should be regular occurrences where people are appearing before the community and soliciting comments and concerns. On the flip side of that is the city council work, is the work at City Hall, is the work um, either introducing legislation, evaluating legislation, voting on legislation. You get to be on committees. The city council probably has a few too many committees, but that gives you lots of choice. Uh, so we'll start with Ms. Honig here. Uh, name, name two or three even committees that you'd like to sit on at the city council and why. Sure. Well, I think unique to District 4 is arts and culture. Um, we have some of the city's, if not the world's, most important cultural institutions here in District 4, arts and culture, which has been an issue that's been important to me for a long time and I worked on the state on, is critical to this district particularly, and I think that it's really important that this representative sits in arts and culture. The second, of course, is women's issues. We are at actually risk of having only five women on the Council of 51 after the results of November's election. We'll probably have somewhere between 13 and 5, but even in a council of 51, that's too few. So women's issues are important to Trampian, certainly for the member of this district and ideally the female representative to this district. And lastly, not super sexy, but really, really important, is waste and sanitation. We have a real issue with 
overuse, overflowing. We've had a waste transfer station that was very controversial in District 5, which abuts our district. We're looking at a proposed sanitation garage in our district. So there's issues not only in terms of dealing with the waste, but helping to educate people that we are an island and we need to conserve. Yeah, you're right. That's one of the committees they often try to beg people on to. That, that is Mr. absolutely powerful true. Committees. Uh, well, having spent some time or work on the council, I can tell you that you, you always want to be on one of the big powerful committees like finance and land use because those are the things that shape the city, including issues like the budget and making sure that we're not having out of control spending, making sure we can work on issues like improving the Euler process, getting communities more involved in land use processes. But for me particularly, I'm interested in issues um, like general welfare. We can deal with issues of homelessness. You can deal with um, issues around uh, the work, for, the sort of workforce development issues that the mayor has been putting into place to improve the lives of New Yorkers. Um, issues of like government, government operations, a committee where you can work on elections, you work on campaign finance, a number of the, a number of the issues I put forth in the 22-point plan um, to make sure that the city's election process, things that we have to go through every single day, are working and to encourage people to be able to run for office. And then you obviously want to work on other big ones like transportation, economic development, education, because those are where pivotal decisions about the city get made. Look, I, I know though either way, wherever I go, I'll be down there, I'll be a productive worker and having spent some time around the council. Um, I know how to sort of work within the legislative body. I put out some ideas that I hope will be adopted to make it a more transparent uh, legislative process, including giving city council members the ability to introduce legislation without the power of the speaker to intercede. Meaning that if you have a good idea, you should be able to get that bill into bill draft form and get it introduced immediately. Because if you want to be a productive legislator, you want to be able to get your bills printed and not have uh, you know, a more powerful entity telling you you can't do that. Thank you. Mr. Herrera, go ahead. Um, I noticed Keith mentioned government relations. I think I would be frightened if Keith was on our government relations government uh, committee. Operations. Government operations, government relations, it's all the same. In, in my book, uh, somebody who it will, have, will be in the pocket of all the different people he has lobbied for who are now going to call in favors if, God forbid, he becomes our city councilman. I would be truly frightened, and I really hope that there are people that are going to investigate the people that have donated to his, to his uh, campaign. Uh, that being said, one of the things that I would like to be uh, on is a committee for education. I really feel that uh, the education system in our entire city is in the tank. I am not happy with the scores that uh, are coming up. Um, the mayor is touting good scores, but really, it's they're not good scores at all. Um, even teachers, many of the teachers that I have spoken with, and I come from a family of teachers, and unlike Keith, I went to pri uh, public school my whole life. Keith has gone to private school. Quickly on education. And I will say you that we, we, need, we need more space for kids in schools. The schools are overcrowded. The, the, school, the scores that kids are coming out with are not good, and I'm so worried that the mayor is reducing the level of acceptance of what schools, uh, of um, tests are that they can use to pass to get to the next grade, that by the time they graduate high school, they're not going to be able to read the uh, the diploma that they're written on. Mr. We Pars, need real I, reform in education, and I want to be on that thank, committee. Thank you. I don't know that there was something exactly specific there, but you were I, criticized. The Government Operations Committee is the name of the committee. Not knowing that, not knowing the cost of the, of the commercial rent tax bill, not knowing the names of committees in the city council, not knowing that you don't have a, 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 a budget for staff offices, is that's concerning to me. That you're applying, you're actually asking for people mm -hmm. to elect you to a job that you don't know what the core functions we'll, of it are. We'll leave it there. Yeah, go ahead. You, you, I did, because well, you've been just, out of the fray here, you have a little less time to speak. So go ahead. Well, no, something. it's fun. It's it, it's great. Um, they're they're <laughs> they're getting to say everything I want to say and don't. So the the point is though is that you can actually bring a bill to the council floor without at the behest of the speaker. Thank but you. the reality is is that the politics, people don't. Because typically people who are in this job are looking for their next thing. I'm running to be a citizen candidate because I will bring those bills to the floor because I'm not worried about what the party's gonna think and I'm not worried about what my next office is gonna be. We need somebody who's really gonna bring a bill to the floor and not worry about the ramifications. Okay, just, a, just, gonna, a, just a quick clarification. This is not about, uh, but you, I agree with you on that. This is not about um, forcing a bill for a vote. This is when you want to get a bill introduced from the beginning. You actually have to go through a number of steps in a lengthy process of city council. It's not we'll, about we'll getting the bill printed. It's about getting the okay. not bill passed. Before we move printed. to closing statements, uh, I'm going to do three quick uh, yes or no or one word sort of answer questions. Quick lightning round of just three questions, and then we're moving into closing yep. statements. So the first one is, um, do you want to see some form of a congestion pricing plan passed uh, through Albany 
in the near future? Uh, yes or no? No further answer, Mr. Power. Yes. Ms. Herrera? Yes. Yes. Sony. Okay. Uh, do you want to see the Rikers Island jail complex closed and then smaller jail facilities opened throughout some of the other boroughs? Uh, Mr. Powers? Yes. Ms. Herrera? No. Sony. I'm still looking at it. Still looking at it. Okay. And last one is uh, not a yes or no, but a grade. What grade would you give Mayor Bill de Blasio as he's seeking re-election? Part of the city council's job, obviously, is oversight of the mayor and the mayoral administration. We'll start with you this time, Ms. Ferreri. What grade would you give the mayor? It's an easy one. It's an F. Ms. Honig? D. Mr. Powers? We've already answered this question in another debate. I think I said C+. Plus. And you stick with that? Yeah. Okay, we're going to move to uh, closing statements. So we're going to start with Mr. Powers. You have about a minute and a half each to make your final pitch to voters viewing this program. Mr. Powers, go ahead. Appreciate it. Thank you for having us today, and thank you for people who are watching at home. My name is Keith Powers, the Democratic nominee for the 4th Council District to replace Dan Garodnik. Over the last 12 years, I watched Dan Garodnik be a, a tough fighter and a tough negotiator on issues in this 4th Council District. And he's also been a neighbor and a friend and somebody I've looked up to. And I would like to continue his work in the City Council. Um, throughout this campaign, I've talked about a new ideas. I've talked about experience working in government and my roots in this community. I think I've created a clear uh, a discussion around ideas, ways that we can help small businesses, ways we can improve affordable housing, ways we can improve the quality of life here in New York City, ways in the City Council particularly we can be more productive. Um, I bring uh, a lot of new ideas to this race. I also bring a lot of endorsements that I'm very proud of. Congress member Karen Maloney, State Senator Liz Krueger, uh, the outgoing council member Dan Garodnik. I was proudly endorsed by the New York Times in the primary um, for a 22-point plan to improve city government. And that plan makes sure that the city council is modernized and transparent, makes sure it's our election process that we've all gone through. Uh, it it make, can encourage people to run for office. It makes sure that we can limit you know, campaign contributions, many more. I'm very proud to have that support. I'm very proud to be from this community as a resident of Peter Cooper and Stives in town, to be a tenant leader, a community leader, and somebody who's worked in government and brings real experience, real ideas to the race. Hope you'll I will hope I'll have your vote on November 7th. My name is Keith Powers, and my website is www.keithpowers.nyc. Thank you. Ms. Herrera, your closing statement. Thank you so much. Uh, again, thank you for this opportunity. My name is Rebecca Harari, and the reason that I'm running for city council is because I honestly care about our constituents all throughout New York City. I am not happy with the direction that our mayor has taken New York, and I want to do something about it. I don't want to just complain about it. I want to get in there and do something about it, and that's what I have a record of doing. I have a record over the last 25 years of working together with people People, real people that need help. I've opened a school for children with autism. I'm opened up a school for children with mild learning challenges. I opened up a community center here on the Upper East Side. And lastly, I opened up a, a nonprofit for women who need to work. Before all that started, I had my own business for 10 years with 30 full-time employees. So I know what it means to have to pay taxes. I know what it means to have to run a business on my own. I am not bought and paid for by, on, by anybody. I am not an a political insider. I am somebody that comes to this job with integrity. Integrity is who I am. It's what I stand for. I'm coming to this office with my eyes wide open, ready to work, ready to not take no for an answer and to get the job done. Thank, Thank you. you. And Ms. Honig, your closing statement. Absolutely. And I think it's, it's great because I really sit squarely between these two candidates. On November 7th, the voters of this district are going to have a choice. They can follow the party line of a path that basically is littered with signs of because that's the way it's always been done before or they can act real and meaningful change. 52% of this district in our primary, which had a, a poor showing, um, voted for a Democratic woman in this race. I am a Democrat. I'm a moderate. I have the Liberal Party endorsement to continue my candidacy as an independent citizen candidate, not beholden to party interests, not beholden to special interests. The issues that are important to this district are the issues that are important to me. They're overdevelopment, affordable housing, uh, small business preservation, safe streets, homelessness. And I will be an untethered advocate for those districts. And that's really the most important thing that a voter can make their decision. Our voter turnout in this city is as low as it's ever been. It's going to be incredibly low given 
um, the options that are, are before us on a city level. And so the vote that somebody can take, or on a citywide level, so the vote that somebody can take for city council is probably the most important vote that they can cast. And they really should think clearly about who is going to represent their interests to be their voice, to have no other agenda but their own. And that's why I believe that they should vote for me, R Rachel Honig, on the Liberal Party line. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. I appreciate the spirited debate. The general election for the 4th District in the City Council will be held Tuesday, November 7th. For more information about voting, locating your poll site, and the candidates, you can visit the League of Women Voters website, lwvnyc.org, gothamgazette.com, or mnn.org. Thank you for watching Manhattan Neighborhood Network. Goodbye.